Hey everybody, welcome back to my channel. In this video, I am going to cover Python Oops concepts. So I am planning to cover all these concepts in three videos. In the first video, I'll cover class object and method. And in the second video, I'll cover full details about inheritance. And in the third video, I'll discuss uh, encapsulation, polymorphism and data, data abstraction. So let's start today's topic. First of all, uh, what is object-oriented programming? Object-oriented programming is a programming approach in which we structure a programming by bundling related properties and uh, behaviors into individual objects. In this approach, we actually solve the programming problems using classes and objects. And this approach mainly concentrates on creating reusable code. Like other general purpose languages, C++ and Java, Python do support object-oriented programming approach. In fact, we can say Python as a pure object-oriented programming language because in Python, we consider everything as object. Let's start learning the main ideas or the main concepts behind this object-oriented programming. So first we'll see class and object. What is a class? Class is nothing but a user-defined data type which holds attributes and behavior of an element. Class is a blueprint of object. And what is object? Object is an instantiation of class. So no memory is allocated when the class is just defined. The memory allocation will be done only when the object is created. Now let's see how to create a class and object. So a class can be created or can be defined using a class keyword, which is followed by name of the class and colon. So any code intended below the class definition is considered as a part of the class body. So uh, in this example, I've just created employee class. Now how to create object of a class. So any new object can be created by typing the name of the class followed by opening and closing parentheses. So here I have created two objects employee one and employee two. So both are different and have unique address location. Let's see constructor in Python. So what is a constructor? If you are familiar with C++ or Java, you no need much explanation about the constructor. But for the people who are new to the programming, let me share a few details about the constructor. A constructor is a special type of method which is called automatically when an object is created or when the class is instantiated. So the task of constructor is to initialize the data members with some values. And the constructor is the first method called when an object is created. created. In C++ or Java, uh, the name of the constructor and the class name should be same. And we should not have any return type to the constructor. But we don't have such kind of things in Python. The init method available in Python represents constructor here. And this is the first method called when an object is created. And we have two types of constructor. One is default constructor and another one is parameterized constructor. Default constructor is nothing but we just create init method without any parameters. It just takes self as parameter. And parameterized constructor is nothing but we just create init method with some parameters. So I just gave a small examples here for default constructor and parameterized constructor. Let's see class methods. So methods are functions defined inside the body of the class. So they are used to define the behavior of the object. So creating a class method is similar to how we create a normal function in Python. And see a constructor, we no need to call them explicitly. It will be called automatically when an object is created. But class methods, we need to call them explicitly using object. Now we'll implement all these concepts, whatever we discussed till now in Python IDE. So first I'll create an employee class. Class employee. Now I'm going to create objects for the employee class. So, as I told before, 
these employee one and employee two are belongs to employee class, but the these two are different and uh, have unique address location. So let me check that. Print to let me first uh, verify the type of the object. So type of EMP one. run this program so this employee one belongs to employee class now let me print the address of the objects print id of emp1 emp2 let me run this program the address of the both objects is different. See, these two are unique objects. Now, uh, let me remove these three lines. And I'm going to add some methods to the class. So, first I'll add constructor. is equal something I'm going to do is this integer now I'll just do some print statement here inside init method So as I said before, so this init method, no need to call explicitly. It will be called automatically when an object is created. Okay. So let me run this program and see. See, see, init method. We have created two objects here. So the init method called two times. Uh, this is default constructor. Now let me create a parameterized constructor. So for that, I'm going to pass in parameters. parameter one and two. So here I'll replace it with parameter two. And here I'm going to pass some values. And this is just now. Uh, let me run this program. Init method is called. So, see, uh, the init method is called two times because we have created two objects. Now we need to see whether these values are uh, initialized properly or not. For that, I am going to uh, implement a method in the class to fetch the values. So let me implement a method get details which takes self as parameter and now i'm going to return the values return name equal to name colon age colon dot format of Dot. Sorry. H. So and we need see uh, constructor. We no need to call them explicitly. Uh, they will be uh, called automatically when an object is created. But uh, normal methods, we need to call them explicitly using objects. Now I'm going to call get details method on EMP object one. EMP one dot 
get details. So let me run this program. What's the mirror? What is this AMB one get details method? It has no attribute name. So, okay. okay. So, we need to use self here. Help dot name. It will work now. Okay, we have to print this values. Print. Let me run this program. So we got name as pinky and is 30. So these are the same values we passed for uh, EMB1 object and the values are initialized correctly. Now I'm going to print values of EMB2. Print EMB2 dot get let me run this program. We should get name as Ravi and age is 40. Yeah, we got the values. So the values was initialized correctly. In this video, I have used self keyword everywhere. So what is a self keyword? Self keyword is used to just specify that particular attribute or a method is belongs to that class. It is similar to this pointer available in C++ language. I think I have implemented all the points that we have discussed, like creating a class, creating an object, defining constructor and method, and calling method using objects. So in the next video, I will cover inheritance. Hope you like my video. If you did, please subscribe and support my channel. Thank you.